guys welcome to another episode of get up 10 and all year we are stepping into deeper levels of wholeness and healing and so we've been kicking off this year talking about different types of healing we heard from chanel mccord therapist we heard from julia and her amazing story of being healed from a traumatic brain injury and now this week we're gonna get to hear from renee scott and how she was healed of cancer yeah you heard that right so just a little background on renee she is a trailblazer in her industry she is the owner of renee scott insurance which offers a portfolio of insurance and financial services they take the pain out of shopping for auto home and business insurance they are known for an exceptional client experience and in addition to that she has an outstanding reputation for integrity commitment passion and for making a difference in her community but aside from all that you're gonna get to see that as an individual, she is a whole force. She has such an amazing testimony and there's so much to be learned from her. Not only did we talk about uh, when she was diagnosed with cancer and the events surrounding that, but we also got to talk about entrepreneurship and motherhood a little bit. And when I heard Renee Scott speak for the first time, I just knew like, I need to get her on the podcast. And with God's grace, I was able to And so this is the last story that I have as part of my healing mini series before we go on to some new topics. But I hope y'all have been encouraged. I hope you've been sharing these episodes with somebody else. I hope these stories have been just like as mind blowing to you as they are to me. And before we get into the episode, you know, I got to remind you guys that my book, Thrive, How to Let Go, Find Purpose, and Flourish When Staying Seems Easier, is now available for purchase on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. So get your copy, get a copy for somebody else. Like, just, you don't want to miss the lessons that are in that book, okay? And it's written with love. So definitely check that out. And... Let's see. I don't think I have any other announcements, so let's get into it. Hi, Renee. Welcome to Get Up Time Podcast. How are you this morning? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, Ginger, for asking me to take part in the podcast this morning. I told you this yesterday, but I'm truly so happy to have you here. Uh, Our paths crossed at the Freedom Encounter through Grace Family Church. And when I heard you share your story, I was like, I need to have her on the podcast (laughs) (laughs) because God put it on my heart to have conversations around healing, especially Mm -hmm. to end out 2023. I was just hearing so many people's stories of dealing with like new age things or even just personal experiences that I've had and and people looking for healing in all these different places. And as as Christians, I feel like we have access to things that we don't take full advantage of. And I feel like a piece of that is healing. And so when I heard your testimony, I was just so Mm -hmm. inspired, honestly, and I really wanted to have you share it with my audience. So today's discussion is going to be a little different than usual, but I know it's going to be good. So you are let me start by saying this, Ginger. Let me let me let me just start by saying this. First of all, let me say thank you for being obedient to the spirit to even um, tackle this topic, because when you think about it, it's a universal topic. Right. I don't care what language you speak. I don't care what color you are. I don't care where you are in this universe. Healing is something that we all need. And Yes, there's physical healing, but there's also spiritual healing, there's mental healing. Every aspect of anyone knows that there is a need for healing. And so to be able to tackle tackle this topic and speak with uh, different individuals regarding their healing journey, I applaud you. So thank you so much again for having me. Thank you. Yeah, it's such a big topic and I might have to find some more guests to cover more of it because I I, it's so important like I really do love this topic I don't you you don't know this I was gonna say I don't know if you know but you don't know (laughs) I am a nurse by trade oh okay I think that's oh I didn't know that yeah I think that's another reason why it's so close to my heart because I've seen a lot (laughs) of things through that and so and I love it's healing watching people heal it's 
it's a process but in, in overall it is such a beautiful thing and I want everybody to pursue healing on a deeper level so so anyways you had quite a journey over is it the last few years yeah, um, it started for me in uh, 2018. And I was, um, you know, healthy. I was actually planning and um, preparing for to run a half marathon. And I remember I'd gone out, this was the Friday before Thanksgiving. So it was a festive time. I had gone to dinner with a girlfriend of mine who wanted to congratulate me on opening my business as an uh, insurance agency owner. And so that was Friday night and Saturday morning out of the blue, I get um, and have the worst pain of my life. Uh, I literally woke up, um, could barely make it to the bathroom and remember telling my husband, you're going to have to help me get out of the bathroom and also get down the stairs. And this pain was just so intense. It almost caused me to black out. It was so painful. I remember just thinking, man, this is even worse than um, giving birth, worse than labor pains. And so we ended up in the hospital on that Saturday before Thanksgiving. And they shared with me, they did, you know, ran a whole bunch of tests. They gave me pain meds and just said, we see something on your ovaries. You need to follow up with your OBGYN on uh, um, on next week. And so, you know, because an ER is there just to kind of triage you, bandage you until you can actually get to a specialist or whatever else is needed. And, um, and so I went home and that's when really the horror began um, because I thought my body was reacting to the pain meds that they gave me because I, I don't take a lot of medicine, but I just remember kind of feeling faint um, on that Saturday. Uh, and I do reference always that it was the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So there's a lot of planning and just a lot of things that are, are going on during that time. And there's so much of it that I forget, uh, but there are, are certain moments of that day that stick with me. And so that Saturday when I came home, I was feeling faint. So I stayed in the bed most of the day, but there was a moment right around midnight. So moving into the next morning, which was Sunday, that I remember my husband standing over me and saying, Renee, Renee, and I had this big gash on my forehead. And what had happened was I had passed out. So I'd gone to the bathroom at passed passed out and um, had hit my head on the corner of the wall. So he helped me get back into the bed. And so Sunday comes, he leaves with my son because my son has a baseball tournament and I wake up um, and I'm just still again, feeling foggy. And my mom calls me and was like, you really need to talk back with the hospital. You don't look good. She FaceTimed me. She's like, you just don't look good. And, um, so I called the hospital and they said, oh, you can come in if you want, but we ran all the tests. We did blood work. We did, you know, sonograms and cat scans and all this stuff. And, um, you're just going to need to follow up with your OBGYN. So I said, okay. So I'm thinking, there's just not anything. But little did I know my daughter, who was 16 at the time, she stayed home with me. She didn't go to the baseball game with my, my husband. She was saying that I was what she looked like um, was having um, seizures. And, um, and so I'm myself just thinking I'm falling in and out of sleep. We end up calling um, 911. And um, I remember getting into the ambulance and them saying, um, we're losing her. And so I, we get to the hospital and, you know, so much of it is a blur. But what ended up happening is me having to have emergency surgery because the cyst they have found on my ovaries the day before had ruptured and I was hemorrhaging to death. And um, my blood was extremely low. Um, and I remember my daughter, you know, crying. And I'm like, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Um, but it was an emergency surgery. I remember the surgeon, um, his name was Dr. Gerber. I will never forget his name just because he was an OBGYN and his name was Gerber. And I just thought about Gerber baby and Gerber baby food. But he says, we almost lost you. And, um, and so I thought that was kind of the end of my journey. Um, I had, you know, really bad pain just from having emergency surgery, um, had to have a C-section cut and the whole bit um, because they had to, to do removals. But I did not think that when I went for my follow-up in two weeks, 
that I would hear the news, something did not look right with your pathology. This is what the doctor said. Something didn't look right with your pathology report. And so we need to send you to an oncologist. And so I'm thinking to myself, oncologist, you know, what is that about? And, um, and so anyway, I went to the oncologist. I still wasn't thinking anything um, was wrong or that there was any type of long-term diagnosis. I didn't even take my husband to the appointment with the oncologist because I just felt like maybe she was just going to share with me what was found in the pathology and that would be it. And um, as I was sitting there in the room and they're asking me so many different questions, um, she says, okay, so you are stage one cancer. And she continues to talk and I could not leave off of stage one cancer. I had lost my father to cancer um, uh, years before I knew so many individuals that had dealt with cancer. And so really, and honestly, Ginger, it was probably my worst fear, my biggest fear coming true. Um, and so she continues to talk to the doctor and, you know, this is what we need to do and, and, and all of these things. And I just could not get past that C word. Um, and so this led into several tests. I ended up having to have another surgery um, because when they did another scan, they found something that was inconclusive on the other side, um, the ovary that they didn't take. And so I needed to have that ovary removed. And so it was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. It really was some dark days. Um, but I am happy to say that I'm on the other side of that journey. And um, and so here I am, just a testimony that God is a healer. He absolutely is a healer. Yes, he is still in the healing business. Yes, he is. Wow, that I can't even imagine what that must have been like for you and your family to walk through. What was it? I'm wondering, like, what was it like breaking that news to your husband? Yeah, it w well, you know, so you get in the car after you've you've heard all of this and you're like, you're just trying to process. And mm -hmm. I don't think I fully processed um, any of it until after I um, had gone through surgeries because for anyone out there that may be hearing um, a cancer diagnosis and you see me sweating, this is part of my, uh, this is just part of um, the cancer journey is because of course, after losing both of my ovaries and having to have a full hysterectomy, I'm in full bloom menopause. And so part of that is hot flashes and I'm having one right now. So and there we go. That's perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost like it was cued um, on point. Um, for anybody who has been diagnosed with any type of illness, I think you go into almost a warrior mode in the in the beginning. So your first thought is like, this can't be real. And you're almost walking in a fog, but then you almost get into a warrior mode because there are so many different, you know, blood tests that you have to do scans that you have to go through surgery, possibly um, some even chemo. Fortunately, that was not um, a part of my journey. I didn't have to do chemo or, any, or radiation. But so you're just going through the flow and it's only until after you go through all of that, that you really have a time to settle into this just happened and being able to process. But back to your question regarding just sharing it with my husband, I opted not to share it with my children um, because at that time, five years ago, I had um, a daughter who was 16 um, going into 17 and my son was 10 or 11. And so I felt like my son was a little bit too young. And um, I just didn't, my daughter was uh, smack dab in the middle of her junior year. So I didn't want to bother her. 
um, with the news that mom was diagnosed with cancer. But I did, of course, immediately share it with my husband. And I tell you, we've been married 26 years. At that point, we had been married 21 years. And when you say I do um, at the altar and you say I do to in sickness and in health, man, did we walk that out. And he was my rock. He was everything that I needed him to be during that time because there was so much going on. I was weak, um, recovery from surgeries and, and all of the things. Um, and so he was everything that I needed him to be, you know, for the kids, for the house, because there was just very little that I was able to do at that point. I had just opened a business. So there was so much going on. I'm like, geez, God, could we have done this? Maybe not when I had started a business, I had just opened a business six months prior. Um, but that was a time um, that all of this came to be. And I will tell you my greatest joy um, ended in all of this was my relationship with Christ Jesus, because I'd always been, you know, a believer, I was saved and I love Jesus and, and all of that. But there is something about when you're in a wilderness experience where you become so intimate with God. I mean, reading the word, it just leaped off the page. Scriptures that I had read that I knew, but now it was being fully manifested in my life. The words that said you will live and you will not die, that he died, um, you know, for that by his stripes, we are healed. All of the blessings that God had spoken in his word now were coming to life in my, in my world, in this experience, in this journey. And, um, and so there was that hope, there was that light, there was that beauty of this new relationship that was being birthed um, in Christ Jesus. That is beautiful. And well, first of all, I got a little emotional <laughs> when you talked about how your husband was just there for you because yes. uh, my parents have been married. Okay. I always do the math based on my age. So <laughs> I'm 27. Okay. So they just made 30 years. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yes. They just made their 30 years in November. Um, and I think so growing up, because I had a healthy marriage in front of me, I didn't appreciate it because it was just normal to me. Yeah. <laughs> but when I got into adulthood and even for myself, like I am now divorced. So to now be an adult and a single mom, uh, to watch my parents' marriage as an adult is just like a completely different perspective. And mm -hmm. just to see the team that they are and how supportive they are of each other like my dad is going through some health issues right now and my mom has a lot she's healthy praise the lord but she has a lot going on as well on her plate but even through that all they're still there for each other so to see that example to hear your story it's just really encouraging to me and a reminder of how important it is to have the right person like somebody with good character and a good heart because it matters absolutely it life, does. It does. Life is hard. Or not, I don't yeah. like, like to say that, but you know, like life has its challenging moments. And when those moments come, you want to have the right people around you. That's what I want to say. Not just life Absolutely. is hard because I don't subscribe to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're right. We weren't meant to do life alone. And so it is important to have your um, tribe. And I will tell you, I had a huge amount of support, you know, from my mom still being alive. She was with me every day in the hospital. Um, Cause during that time I had like a four day hospital stay. She was right there with me in the hospital so that my husband could be home um, with the kids. I had um, uh, sisters from church church that were right by my side, praying for me, covering me in prayer, visiting me at the hospital, bringing me meals. And, um, and so, yeah, my, my, my prayer and wish for anybody that's going through any type of difficult situation, especially on the front of healing, that they have individuals that are there with them, walking them through it, because it is so very difficult to do it on your own. Yeah, absolutely. So before this all happened, you mentioned that you were preparing to run a marathon. So is it safe to say that you were like relatively healthy before 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Getting my, you know, getting my yearly mammograms, getting my, you know, your, your, for women, pap smears, all, you know, annual physical, all of that. Um, and let me just shed some light on, um, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and only 15% of women find ovarian cancer in the very, um, first stage, stage one, Mm -hmm. because there are no symptoms with ovarian cancer and most uterine cancers. And I do faintly remember I was having back pain, Um, but I was training for a half marathon. So like that wasn't um, uncommon for me to have, you know, running long distances, 10 miles, eight miles um, for me to have back pain. Um, But looking back now, that was a little bit of a clue that something was going on. There is a blood test that women can request from their physician, um, their OBGYN or their gynecologist, a CA, so C is in cat, A is in apple, 125 blood test. It's not something that is typically going to be ordered, um, but it is something that you can request. So if you're feeling anything that is out of the norm, that doesn't feel right, definitely talk with your physician uh, because that one little simple blood test may be um, just what the doctor orders um, or needs to order for you to know if there's anything going on beyond just your regular, um, aches, aches and pains. But yeah, beyond that, I was healthy. Like I had no idea anything was, um, going on in my body and definitely didn't know that I was within 24 hours of almost losing my life. No idea at all. Yeah. That's crazy. And thank you for sharing about that blood test because that might save somebody's life. And it's good to know these things because these are not, that's not everyday knowledge for sure. That I learned something new. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So after you had your hospital stays and procedures, what was, I guess, like the aftermath or the, the I guess we can call that part the healing journey because now that, that those surgeries happened and everything was taken out, that's uh-huh. like really when recovery began. So how was that for you? Yeah, I would um I would definitely say I'm 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 still walking through the healing journey, believe it or not, even though it's five years after the fact, because for me, um the biggest um side effect of what took place in my body is menopause um and surgically induced menopause. I have done now so much research on um, menopause. Average age for menopause is 51. Um, When this took place in my body, I was 45 years old, really had not even started, or at least I didn't think I had started perimenopause, which comes um, before menopause. And a lot of people don't realize menopause starts once you are one year without your menstrual cycle. Um, and so anything before that is perimenopause and which can start as early as your thirties, um, with perimenopause, hot flashes, night sweats, things of that nature. But for me, what I had to really battle with from a healing standpoint was one processing the fact, um, from a spiritual standpoint, a mental standpoint that I had been diagnosed with cancer. My body now was different. I did not have ovaries. I didn't have a uterus. I didn't have estrogen in my body. I did not realize how important estrogen was to the body. Um, Ginger, you're young. And so estrogen is flowing free in your body. But let me tell you, for women who are perimenopause, Uh, menopause, surgically induced menopause, that was probably the hardest part of my healing journey that I'm still walking out because unfortunately for me, I can't take any type of hormone replacement therapy. So I can't, some women have the option where they can do hormone or HRT hormone replacement therapy to replace estrogen I didn't have that option because the type of cancer that I was diagnosed with, any type of hormones added to my body would actually feed um, cancer. And so I'm cancer free right now. I go back every year. um, The first two years, part of the healing journey was having to go back every three months to do blood work and then pelvic exams. And then once I graduated uh, after every three months, then I went 
at twice a year. And then now I'm once a year. So I am still cancer free. Thank God. But I still have the impact of menopause on my body. So um, what does that what does that look like? Um, for the first time in my life, I dealt with anxiety and fear. I was extremely anxious. Um, I would wake up in a um, almost like a panic attack. Um, fear would just grip me that came out of nowhere. Um, and so I had to take a medicine um, for that. Um, in addition, um, just hot flashes, uh, weight gain, um, restlessness with sleep. So just a lot of different things that my body is now going through. But I want to leave your audience with just some, if you're okay with this, Ginger, just some practical steps on how to navigate and maneuver when there is healing that is needed. Because even though you may be a believer, when your body is full of pain, when you are struggling from a mental perspective to even grasp what you've heard from the doctor, um, it's easy to say, you know, just pray about it. Just read a scripture. Um, but that doesn't always, it's good to do that. Absolutely. I, I do not want to reduce that in any way, but it is also good for you to have someone that you can talk to. During that time, I did consult with um, a counselor because I needed to be able to share what I was feeling um, and how it was impacting my body. But from a practical step, some of the things that I did was I saturated myself in the word of God. First and foremost, um, I would lean heavily on scripture. I would play it at night. Um, the Abide app, it's called A-B-I-D-E, um, is an app that I would use. I would go to sleep with it at night. And it's just meditation. It's basically throughout the night, um, scriptures that are being read just to help lull me to sleep. When I tell you the word of God, I snuggle with it. I um, listen to it in my car. Um, I read it as much as I could just because it gave me so much comfort, so much hope. And the um, scripture that I and I'm going to be looking down because I want to share this scripture with your um, audience. Um, I loved Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter and the 17th verse. And if you don't mind, Ginger, I would like to read it. And so um, just to give a backdrop of this story, it's King Jehoshaphat and there's this army coming and he doesn't know what to do. And as a result of that, um, the Lord speaks and this is what the Lord said. So he's in the fight of his life. He is the king and he doesn't know what to do with this army coming to attack. And this is what the Lord says to him through a prophet. Verse 17, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And then verse 18 says, Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all of the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. And so that is a scripture I read. I probably know it by heart. This entire chapter, day after day, like I just clung to this so much because I was like, God, I don't have the strength to fight. I don't, I don't, I don't even have the strength to move my body the way that I used to. But I took joy in the fact that his word says, you will not have to fight this battle. And I will put my name in. You, Renee, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Renee, stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Renee, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. And so I just leave that as encouragement because prayer, scripture, 
and a community of believers praying for me, it is what made the difference for me in my healing journey. Thank you for sharing that. I'm so glad that you did because I think that scripture is just so powerful. And when I hear it, it reminds me of the song Defender. I don't know if you know that. Okay. I love that song. Yes, it it is. Because he is our defender. Yes. And it says like, all I did was stand still. All I did was bow down. (sighs) Yeah. Like that song gets me so emotional because there has been moments in my life where that is my story. Like I was just before God and he was fighting on my behalf. So I love that scripture. I love that song. Um, And I have to tell you, because I love to give people their flowers while they're alive and <laughs> while they can appreciate them. <laughs> so as I mentioned in the beginning, we crossed paths at the Freedom Encounter through our church. And it was about I guess a week or so before Thanksgiving yes yeah it was right before Thanksgiving yeah Yeah. and so I have a three-year-old and she just started preschool this year or last year now it's 2024 (laughs) and that was a really big adjustment for us um wow for me as a mom and her as a child (laughs) yeah and yeah because as I mentioned like I I'm a nurse, so I th- I blame college. I think college made me a little, I don't want to say lazy, but <laughs> like towards the end of college, I did not have classes every day. And so I got used okay. to that. And then I transitioned into the workforce and I didn't have to work every day, only my three shifts. So again, I got comfortable with having days off. And so to now enter this season with my daughter where we got school Monday to Friday, it was mm-hmm. a lot for me on top of like working on my own soon to be official business and getting that up and running and organized. I was mm-hmm. exhausted. So when I came to freedom, I was like, I, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but yeah. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And I got prayed over and I literally just felt like a burden was just like lifted off my shoulders. Like they just felt lighter. And Amen. so I go back to my seat and I was like, I'm going to look up shoulders in the Bible. I'm going to see if I can find something about shoulders that wow. might speak to what I'm feeling or what I've experienced. And now you make me want to look up my scripture. Maybe I'll put it in the show notes because. <laughs> oh, that'll be perfect. I don't remember the particulars, but I do know it was also, it might have been Second Chronicles. So I find this verse and it literally was this, those exact words, like talking about God taking the weight off of your shoulders. Yes. And so I found that verse and I was like, wow, like, I love that, that it speaks to what I'm feeling. And then. I'm sitting there and then you were the next speaker and you get up and you're like, let's go to second Chronicles. And I was like, Oh my goodness. Like, (laughs) okay. I was definitely meant to see this verse then. (laughs) Yes. 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 Your, your testimony and what you shared was so powerful. And yeah, I was just very grateful for you and to hear your story. Okay, I got a few more questions. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. I think, I don't know if it's like the nosy aspect of me or what. But no, I, that's okay. <laughs> ask away. So, okay, you answered, I was going to ask how you processed, but I think you alluded to that. Um, oh, I wanted to ask, how did you find your counselor? Oh, it was, uh, she was referred to me through a friend at church. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it it was a a referral from church, but others, um, you know, if you, I know a lot of individuals in corporate America, you may have an employee assistance program. They will sometimes offer um, care through um, or counselor care through um, that program. Take advantage of that. Just find someone that you're able to talk to that will be able to assist you in processing what's going on. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. I always like to ask that question because 
after I graduated college, I knew that I wanted to see a counselor or a therapist, but I didn't know how to find one. And so I think that prevented me from finding one for a while until after I went through what I went through with my daughter's father. And I was like, oh, no, I definitely need to talk to somebody now. <laughs> There's yeah. no more excuses. And I ended up finding I think I did what you said originally. I tried to find somebody who would take the insurance from my job, but okay. I just was not I didn't feel like I was making progress with her so that led me to a Facebook group and I just asked does anybody have a good therapist and that's how I found the woman that I have been with now for I'm I'm losing track I think it's going on three years definitely two years now and I've had such a wonderful experience with her so I'm such a big advocate for counseling and absolutely it's so important so important for sure yeah. So I always like to ask, like, how did you find yours? Because yeah. people, I want people to know diff- their options. Yes, mm-hmm. know their options. And since going through all of this, um, have you been able to get back to physical activity or not really? Or Oh, yes, I have. I have. Um, yeah. um, I walk um, at that time. The time, you know, five years ago, I was running, training for a half marathon, as I shared. Um, I haven't run since. It's just a little bit too hard um, on my body. So I walk. um, My workouts look different. I don't do intense workouts anymore. So I do a lot of yoga, Pilates, walking, stretching, um, just because my core was weakened significantly between the three abdominal surgeries that I had in a matter of three years um, because I had had a partial hysterectomy um, a few years before um, this occurred and um, and so I had uh, had to do a lot of work to build my core Um, I still struggle with um, back uh, my back hurting. Um, and so that's why I do less intense workouts. Um, but, um, part of my, you know, health regimen is drinking lots of water, um, visiting a chiropractor and of course, exercise like that is so important. You've got to, you've got to get that body moving. So I am so thankful to be able to, to do that. Of course I had to, you know, wait my six to eight weeks post-surgery. Um, but, definitely fully back active now and so thankful for it good I'm so happy to hear that I'm really big on staying active I was a student athlete my whole entire like up until college so what sport I played basketball in college I'm not tall I was a guard (laughs) wow that's exciting yeah and so when I got towards the end of college I realized that my health and fitness would now be my responsibility and since Mm -hmm. I have stayed in the gym (laughs) whether it was at first I would before I had a child I would be in the gym for like two hours taking classes back to back and then I got into orange theory for years now I'm Mm -hmm. like 45 and I'm always so big about you it's so important to find a way to move your body that you enjoy and that's good for you. So I'm happy that you have been able to. Yes. Good. And I also also want to get into entrepreneurship a little bit because that okay. is a piece of my heart. So honestly, I'm a little not surprised that when you start your business, this would happen. Because. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I saw this post a couple of years ago that kind of stays in my mind, especially lately, given the season of life that I'm in. And I'm definitely not one of those people who's like, oh, everything is the devil. Everything is, oh, there's always attacks. I don't know. Like, like, yes, there's opposition, but Mm -hmm. sometimes there's other things, other factors. But anyways, this particular post says that the, the devil fights entrepreneurship. I forgot the second part, but essentially because he knows like what could happen if you're successful in entrepreneurship, like the legacy that it could leave, the breakthroughs that happen, the freedom that is created and and all that comes along with entrepreneurship. And so that's why sometimes there is going to be resistance when you start your business. So I'm not sure why I shared that, but anyway, I guess because you definitely had some resistance. Yeah. 
Yeah. It, I mean, it's, and it's encouragement. It's going to be a part of life. I mean, you're yeah. going to get resistance no matter what, right? He says yeah. in this life, you will have trouble. Like it's life. is not going to be easy. You're going to be nervous about stuff. There's going to be anxiety. You're going to have stress. I mean, it's all a part of life. Um, and so, yeah, entrepreneurship is not anything um, different at all. Uh, I mean, I had failures in entrepreneurship. I had successes in entrepreneurship. It is the most exhilarating, yes, ex yet exhausting um, uh, thing that I've ever had to walk out. And I was called to entrepreneurship. It is not anything I ever wanted. It was a uh, God spoke it in my life, and it took me ten years to actually be obedient and, and, and follow after what he had said. And, um, and so it was definitely something that I was called to, I would not, um, go back to corporate America unless he just said that I needed to, um, best decision I could have ever made in my life. I absolutely love being an entrepreneur. I love entrepreneurship, um, for individuals that will take the leap, generate their own income. Um, it is the absolutely best decision for me and for anybody who is, um, thinking about entrepreneurship, make sure it's something that you've been called to, because I tell you what, it is probably one of the hardest things you're ever going to have to face, um, as an entrepreneur. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for saying that. And that was going to be my question is like, how did you get into it? But you said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I was called to it. I was happy working in corporate America, I thought I would retire from um, corporate America. But um, a, a woman has spoken in my life. She was like, I see this for you. And like I said, it was 10 years before I actually had it fulfilled in my life. But even though when she shared that with me, I did not, um, I wrote it down. You know, I wrote it down in my journal, like, okay, this is what she sees. Um, and there was a man who came up to me uh, at that time. I was working in insurance and he was an insurance agency owner at that point. And he says, how long are you going to um, not have the money for to change your generations to come? And um, I don't know. It was like those words met with what had been prophetically spoken years before and boom, I mean, it ignited a fire within me. And so I took the steps that were needed to pursue entrepreneurship in the insurance industry. And so opened my doors as a um, agency owner in 2018 and am still an agency owner um, to this day. So this will be year six <laughs> and it is hard to believe it's been quite a journey, but I'm so thankful for it. Best decision I could have ever made. That's awesome. What kind of insurance do you deal with? Oh, I sell um, auto, home, as well as business insurance. So I'm the owner of Renee Scott Insurance. So it's self-named. <laughs> it's kind of easy to remember. Um, and I insurance had been, I mean, I had worked in the insurance industry for 23 years. Oh. Um, yeah, before I started um, as an agency owner. And um, I tell you, I love it absolutely love it. So um, for anybody, you know, hey, if they want to reach out, know more, they're more than welcome to reach out to me. I'm sure you'll have that information in the show notes. And absolutely. I can definitely send it to you. Actually, I think I owe you a bio. I was supposed to email that to you yesterday. So I apologize. I'll no send rush. it to you, Ginger. <laughs> no rush. Great. Yeah, I'll definitely include that information as well. And the last thing I would like to touch on is motherhood. Yeah because you shared that so from from two different perspectives because you shared that you didn't initially share the news of your cancer diagnosis with your children mm -hmm. you felt like that was best at the time but two things I'm curious about is now that your children are a little bit older and that you are on the other side of this journey yeah ha if you've ever had conversations with them or did they at some point come to put two and two together of what was going on? And and also, I want to talk about the impact that entrepreneurship has had on your family. Those two things. Okay. So let's talk about my children. Um, yeah, they now know that I have cancer because I share this testimony um, and shared it, you know, on major stages. And so I didn't want, of course, tell 
the public and I have told my children, um, probably biggest mistake I, I made was not telling my daughter. Um, she was there with me the day that I was rushed to the emergency room. She saw me near death. She was right by my side. And so she held anger um, against me for not sharing with her, not allowing or not feeling like I could trust her with that information. And, um, and so we've had a, a chance. Um, she has a therapist as well. So she was able to kind of share that part with her therapist. I had an opportunity to share with my therapist. I felt like I was protecting her. I needed to protect her, but children are way more resilient than we we think and um i should have told her from the very beginning but i think um for me and the fact that i had i went into warrior mode and so i have the ability whether it's a good or bad to really com com compartmentalize and so if i am needing to go through surgeries and all of that, I can just push everything else to the side. And so having to deal with telling it with my children and walking that through, I didn't want to have to do that while I was fighting for my life and going through surgeries and recovery and all of that. Um, but that is probably one of my biggest regrets is that I did not share with her from the very beginning um, that I was diagnosed um, with cancer. Now to your second question regarding entrepreneurship and my family. Um, my family works with me. This is a family owned business. Um, and so I had the conversation with my family regarding entrepreneurship before I went down that road because a lot was going to change. I was giving up my salary. I was giving up my benefits. I was going to be working like crazy. There was more things that dad was going to have to do versus mom because I was becoming um, and, and walking through entrepreneurship. And so it was a family discussion. I remember like when I made it through the first year or whatever the case may be or hit a certain milestone I was like we're all going to dinner this is all of our success you've all been a part of it they all made sacrifices for it so if you have a family and you're going to be an entrepreneur you've got to make sure you have that conversation with your family they need to know um, kind of what you're going through because you're going to be pulled away um, there were baseball games that I couldn't attend there were events that I couldn't go to you know with staff and and every Everything, um, needing to be there for my team. And so I, I needed to make sure that my children knew, um, of course, my husband knew, but, um, and what I loved during that time, and I know we're, we're coming to a close, what I loved during that time, there's this one moment I remember so vividly and fondly is my children met me right where I was. So I would leave early in the morning, I would come home late at night, I would be dog tired. And I remember there was a time when I was still fully clothed in my clothes, and I laid on the floor. And before I knew it, I fell asleep sleep. And when I woke up, my kids were right there laying on me. And it was just like, we get mom, no matter what she sleep, we're going to sleep with her. We're going to lay right here with her. And it was probably one of the most vivid, fond memories that I have that they were willing to meet me right where I was. They did not wake me. They just joined me in that rest. And so I'm just so thankful for them. I have a, a beautiful, wonderful family and I'm so grateful to God for it. That is beautiful. I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes because <laughs> that is how my daughter is. Like she will find me wherever I'm yeah. <laughs> and I will wake up with a little human on my head. <laughs> They're so sweet. Like I love it. Three, year, three years of age is, I remember for my daughter, it was a feisty time. She was quite feisty at three, mm -hmm. um, but it's a sweet time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And also I was reminded of my very first business coach. She is a mom of three boys and she always talks about the importance of bringing them along on the journey and including oh, them. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Them. So important. And going back to you, you sharing your testimony, your story, your diagnosis, I don't know the right word, uh, your experience with cancer with your children. Um mm -hmm. It reminds me of something I walked through just the other day because my parents are also very strong and responsible and 
they I watch them go through things and I'm a very emotional person (laughs) but my parents are not as emotional and I know part of that is because their faith they're rooted in their faith so why would I worry when I know God's got me but also they're very much like we're gonna figure this out we're gonna do what we gotta do so they don't always show their emotions up front yeah and now that life is happening family members are getting older uh, we moved to florida last year so a lot of big changes that have happened um, wow my siblings and i we look at my parents and we're like are you okay you want to talk about it like how are you feeling like yeah what's going on? yeah uh just a couple of days ago my my mom was open about not being okay and I was able she she was dealing with uh my grandmother was in the hospital and she got she was hoping to bring my grandmother home that day but okay. the doctor that was there this was like New Year's Eve was not it was a different doctor and he was not allowing my grandmother to go home and that was really upsetting for my mom because she had been preparing all day to bring her mom home to bring her home yeah and she was transparent with us as a family and was like they don't want to bring her home and I'm not okay and I immediately oh, called so her awful. and I just talked to her she was in tears and my it takes a lot for my mom to cry so I knew she was not okay but I knew also she was probably very tired because she had been up since four in the morning but I was able to call her and talk to her and pray for her mm, and that's awesome that's stuff that I do for other people all the time so it to do it for my mom was even so much more special and she thanked me after the fact for that and I was like absolutely like like I mentioned I do this for I do this for anybody else so how much more than would I do it for you and it was as a daughter it meant a lot to me to be there for my mom so I'm happy that um I'm glad she opened up yeah yeah for sure I'm happy that for you like you have been able to have your family along the journey with you and uh, have these conversations and yeah well do you have you've already said a lot so (laughs) you don't really need to say anything else but I always like to give the opportunity for just any closing thoughts or whatever it might be on your heart at the moment well, just um, first of all, again, thank you, Ginger. I appreciate you providing me an opportunity to share my testimony. Um, my prayers for any person that's listening to this that may have just received a diagnosis is going through a difficult time. Maybe it's a family member that received a diagnosis. Um, just know that God wants to meet you right where you are, that he desires to walk with you on the journey. Um, Lean into him. It doesn't have to be an eloquent prayer. It doesn't have to be an hour long prayer. It just needs to be, I'm not okay, God. Will you encourage me? You know, let me just end, if you don't mind, with a prayer. Um, because prayer is so important. And so God, we just thank you. We honor you for this time. We just love you. We exalt you. We extol you. And we thank you, Lord, for Ginger and just this platform that you've entrusted her with. Thank you, Lord, for those that are listening. Thank you, um, uh, God, for those that may be walking through a journey that is so difficult, so dark. Um, we thank you, God, that you are the light, that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you that your word tells us to don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, stand firm. It's not your battle, it is mine. And so, God, we rest in you, we lean on you, we depend upon you, Father God. We ask that you, Holy Spirit, would just provide comfort for those, Lord. God, I pray your healing powers. I dispatch an angel, an army of angels, Father God, to just meet your sons and your daughters right where they are. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Renee. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. Yeah!